Maharaj was very fond of your daughter. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, so we've all seen Maharaj except for Beth. Oh, so okay. you met in U.S. Yeah, we saw him when he was in the U.S. Yeah, he was here for it. it you know, it's three and a half years. Uh, three and a half years because it was October of 2015 that he was here. <clears throat> Doesn't seem that it's been long ago. I still have a little piece of paper with the uh, with the mantra on it. I kept it because I th I figured that he wrote it himself, so I had to keep it. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Maybe it was his wife who printed it out. It's very nice printing. So, John, how are the, uh, the chanting going uh, when you're on the train or whatever? Are you still listening to the bhajans? How is the what going? I'm sorry. You're traveling back and forth to work. You uh, turn oh, on. Oh yeah, yeah. In the morning, I, you know, I, I'm on the train at 5 a.m. and I'm oh. listening to Kakadarate. And as I'm driving into the train, I'm listening to Kakadarate. Uh -huh. And then in the morning coming back, or in the evening coming back, I'm listening to the afternoon bhajan. Uh -huh. Definitely. And more, and lunchtime, uh, just sitting there. And uh, actually, my computer won't do the MP3 playing thing anymore. So I actually go to the website, ramakantmaharaj.us, so I can see the image of uh, Maharaj during the afternoon bhajan for Guru Purnima. He's sitting, and I sit there, and I eat my lunch with him every day. <laughs> yeah, Maharaj is with me always. I mean, and with all of us always, uh, you know, in the car, if there's traffic or whatever, I sit there and I say, ha ha, okay, master, this is a time where we're just going to keep quiet and just see, you know, and, and it, no matter what it is, it's just always, it's as if Maharaj is, is my friend that is with me all the time. I'm, I'm constantly in dialogue and, you know, with the bhajan and like I said, eating lunch and the images around the house, uh, going to bed at night, bowing. About to each one of the masters from uh, Gurlingam Maharaj to Ramakat Maharaj. And then I sleep at the master's feet because it's a large picture of Maharaj and the feet of the uh, Samadhi with also the picture of the guru feet with the flowers. So I wake up in the morning and it's, oh, good morning, master. And that may seem a little extreme, but for me and my own self, it's just, it's so natural. It's just... Uh, Maharaj is there constantly, and and there's no, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. 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 It's very very great. What's funny? I don't know. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> just happy. <laughs> uh, devotion. <laughs> nice. It's so nice, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's, uh, this this devotion it wells up within you. It 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 overflows. It's um, mm -hmm. just 
you know, I guess if somebody had a video camera and following me around watching all this stuff, they'd say, okay, John is definitely off his rocker because <laughs> he's like, he's ignoring basically all the whole world and constantly being with the master and talking to Maharaj and bowing and waking up and bowing. And, but this is just the natural way. And it's not like it's a, because there is no camera doing it like, okay, let's have a show. John walking around his house, bowing to the masters. Oh, that looks very nice. No, this is just the normal thing. And, you know, just presence. Immediately, you know, okay. You know, Maharaj is here. This, this session, this is, it's, it's everywhere. It's just, it's, it's, um, yeah, there's nowhere that Maharaj is not, especially now that he's no longer, you know, I don't perceive him in that limited body form anymore. So now I know that he's, <laughs> he's everything, all the time, everywhere, which he always was. But mm -hmm. when he was in body form, you, I, you know, you know it's the presence using the body form to speak directly to itself in the body form that you're currently using. But it's very beautiful to to then know that that same presence is no longer speaking in Maharaja's form, but it's, it's, it's here. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's, 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 it's flowing throughout everything. And just take notice of it, you know, take notice of the devotion and devotion. Mm -hmm. Like Maharaj says, you're not bowing to him. You're bowing to selfless self. And, mm -hmm. and that's the, you know, throughout your day, like I said, in traffic and there's car, you know, it's rush hour and cars are coming and going. And I, I'll say, oh, okay, master, this could be a, you know, and, and I'm talking just like a normal thing. And I have a picture of the, uh, well, actually now in my car that I have now on my phone, I can just press and it'll be the Samadhi picture that I have on my phone. So immediately I'm, okay, let's forget about this. Tra and traffic is going to move as it is anyway, but I'm spending time with Maharaj and, you know, listening to the Bajans and just really just enjoying. Mm -hmm. Yes, it makes the commute a lot better. Yeah, and it's, it's a commute that's not commuting because there's no experience or being created, I'm commuting or I'm experiencing this commuting. No, it's, it's just uh, even the train, you know, get on the train and then suddenly it's okay, gallery place China time, time to get off the train and go to my next little train that has one stop and boom, I'm at work. And then I sit at my work and I start working and all that and then 11 o'clock comes or 1130 actually. I go and I make my lunch either in the microwave or go downstairs and eat it and tu -tu -tu, put on bhajan and sit there and listen to bhajan and just be like, just so. And then at work, when I leave, I put it on headphones, start walking with afternoon bhajan. Mm -hmm. Even on a Saturday, when I go to see my son, I get in the car and to drive up to Frederick, it's Bajan, morning Bajan. They will kakadarate. Even though, like I know, I probably I'm, it's like nine o'clock, maybe kakadarate is too late, but I like kakadarate, so I put that on and I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> Does your son know all of these practices? He actually watches our videos. And ask questions, but oh, that's not, not, yeah, it's good, but you know, not too heavy because uh, he even said, dad, I'd really like to just keep pretending I'm a human, even though maybe I might <laughs> not be just because, you know, I'd like to live a little bit of my life before I know that it's not real. I said, that's cool. You know, no worries. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> How old is he? How old is he? He's 11. Eleven. Uh -huh. That's a profound statement for an eleven-year-old. <laughs> <It's serious. laughs> mm -hmm. So he watches the Tuesday night um, recordings. Yeah, on YouTube. Yes, yeah. on YouTube. He subscribes uh -huh. to YouTube. So, like tomorrow, when this whole uh, thing is, you know, sent, then it goes up uh -huh. on YouTube, and he'll then, as a subscriber, get it and sit there and watch it. Oh, uh -huh. well, well, like mm -hmm. a lot of 
like a lot of people, I think I'm, I'm, just, I'm just assuming this, but uh, when I was about that age, I was involved with the uh, Methodist church and we were, I don't know if it was 11 years old, 12 years old, but uh, we were going to be going through, uh, uh, it was like, I forget the word for it, confirmation, I think. And uh, you were supposed to mm. surrender your uh, life to Christ. And uh, mm. I had this sense, to, I had this sense in me that I, I wanted to do it, but I also wanted to live my life and and there were, I was afraid there was things I was going to miss if 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 I committed wholeheartedly or something like that. Even though I was tr kind of trying to commit wholeheartedly because I I believed in the uh, spirit of goodness behind everything. And uh, but I, I talk to adults now, and some of them say, "Well, I don't want to devote the time to spirituality, even though I know." It might be a good thing uh and even now too you know i i still have uh, a certain attraction of putting uh, worldly things ahead of spirituality so but no i mean that's that's a little bit different like for your like maharaj says you identify yourself perfectly and then go live this life that is being lived. And, and, but you identify yourself perfectly so that, yeah, you can still enjoy the life and, and, and be here. It doesn't go away. Like so many people think like, okay, once you have reached this like consciousness state or whatever, then the whole world disappears and you're like walking on stars or something. No, it's not this at all. It's well, the you fact were, that- You were sort of like that when you were walking through the crowd, crowd in India, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't walking. There were physical things. It wasn't like I'm walking on stars or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, You know what I'm saying? It's, you're using the physical body. It's just a joy, and it's very light. It's just like if you were wearing the clothes that were a little bit too tight, and you went and you bought new clothes, and they fit much nicer, and they were much looser, and you could move in them without them uh, binding or anything like this. But you still quite happily go about your day. Do your job, do your duties. Maharaj always says this. It's not like you're just divorcing yourself from the world. That's actually kind of the spiritual ego that tries to divorce itself from the world. And Maharaj kind of made fun of that when he says, oh, I'm spiritual man. How can I do such a thing? And this and that. No. And that's even, you know, like all of our lineage masters, they didn't dress any differently than the normal folks that are just walking around. Srinya Zagadatta Maharaj made a big point about that. I'm not growing my long beard and sitting with a cane and, you know, having my long hair and all this. No, because it's, it's the reality. You know, oh, yeah, okay, this is a long dream. I'm not this body. I'm this formless sense of presence, this knower of this formless sense of presence. I can use body form to know this. But prior to taking body, I didn't know any of these things. Since I'm not a body, everything that came along with the body is an illusion. Okay, but enjoy the illusion. Just like you're acting on a television show or, or a movie, you say, okay, I'm going to be, I'm being John. Okay, let's just be here. But it's not a matter of, I'm going to wait till the end of my life to do spirituality, because then, uh, I think it was A Ashtravaka, oh, what was his name? Ash Ashtravaka? The, the guy who was a million Bens or oh, something like okay. that. And somebody, the king, the king was saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want to see this guy right now because I'm very busy. Tell him to come back in one week. And they banged the drum. And the king was like, why do you bang this drum? He says, well, you know you're going to be alive in one week. And he says, aha, okay, yes. So you don't put off, you see. You find yourself now. You know yourself now. You know yourself in a real sense. Okay, I'm not body. But as long as I have this body and I'm in this world, I do what needs to be done in the moment. And everything then becomes pick up the drink and put it back down. Nothing so serious. Nothing pressuring. And definitely the clothes are not so like, oh, 
you know, people are looking at me and what am I? No, it's not like this. So find yourself. That is important. No matter how, you know, knowing yourself in a real sense. And then, okay, I'm not the body, but the body's here, open and available. So why not drive it around for a while? That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much patient with myself in one sense, because, uh, like, uh, I, even though sometimes I sort of feel like I have to force myself to do mantra and spirituality, but also at the same time, I don't, uh, I, I don't, uh, uh, beat myself up if I, because I forget so much, so often to, to do mantra. Like, it's really hard for me to remember to do it. I just, I just get distracted very easily. And, uh, uh, it, there, and I do have, you know, a certain amount of connection with it, but the connection, you know, is sort of weak and it, it disappears easily. But I know if I if I pay attention, I can sort of uh, remember what the connection is, and then the connection comes eventually again through practice or just through. Uh, inquiry and stuff like that uh, but it's still you know it's a slow process for me there's not like a, sometimes this connection is strong and I think well this is it's gonna it's I've got it you know it's gonna stay here but it never stays the connection never stays do you read the books and listen to the videos and the talks on a regular basis oh uh, I read books on a regular basis but I don't really listen to the talks, I guess. Yeah, I would suggest going on ramakantmaharaj.us. Yeah. And even if it's just background, having that going. Yeah. Because the main thing is, as long as the busy mind is off doing this and off doing that, then it's like we talked about, the chariot. You're in the chariot and the horses are going this way and that way and this way. And every once in a while, they're in line and you're going in a correct way. But most of the time, they're all off in this way. And they're, they're allowed to do this. Like Maharaj has stated before, you have to be very aware of a thought coming in to distract you from the reality. Yeah. Every thought about this body form that you're holding is distracting you from the reality when you go chasing it. I call it momentum. It's like it's got a momentum. Yeah, and you want to kill that momentum. It's like the thought train... And it, it, if you don't like really take care, then the thought train will build and will build momentum. And once the train starts going speedily, very fast, you know, it's hard. Even when you put the brakes, the train won't stop. Right, right. But if you catch the train before the momentum is built, before this pressurization of I am somebody, I'm thinking these thoughts, I don't want to be thinking these thoughts, but I'm thinking them, now I have to think less thoughts and you get into that cycle, it's all, you're providing the power to the mind that you're trying to escape from, but you're paying attention to it, which is providing more power and, and, and impossible to escape. Good. So when you see this happening, just bring it back. But you should be aware all the time. Uh, you just, you're aware. You don't even have to be aware, you are aware. Like whatever is passing before you, you're aware that it's passing. I think Maharaj uses the example, if you're walking in the street and somebody is coming towards you and you just do not like this person at all. See, so you avoid this person. Maybe you walk slower. Maybe you change to the other side of the street. But you see this person coming or this thought presenting itself and you just say, no, 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 no. Not, 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 not now. No, not now. And you have to develop this habit. You have to really do this. And that's what I was trying to think of today. Uh, something that I took a marble and put it in a little plastic thing and put it in my pocket, a little pill, pill box, to see if uh, maybe I would hear it shaking and that would help remind me to come back uh, to awareness. Uh, do this with your hands, with your fingers. I think this is a very famous thing that they have of like you you switch attention from like the world to the self and you can just be kind of nominally walking and oh yeah okay and just this yeah. 
As like Maharaj says, this is the little mistake. The little mistake is you take yourself to be something. So in this, you press your fingers together. This is the self. This is the world or whichever, vice versa. And then just kind of hold your fingers every so often when you think of it. And okay, I want my mind. Okay, my mind's gone a little bit too much on worldly things. Let's bring it back. Okay. Because the truth is all the worldly things that I'm considering thinking about are not true. So I'm kind of, I'm thinking about things that are not actually happening and worrying about the happenings that are not going to be because I'm not really there, but I'm creating this. I am somebody else to which all this is happening and none of it's true. Yeah, that I, I get, you know, <clears throat> I can get to understand that quite clearly. And, and I think of it like, uh, like this idea of touching your fingers is probably better than the idea that I came up with today. Cause I, I think of, I was thinking that all these thoughts that I think are kind of like poopy, you know, and, uh, this, uh, do you have pictures of the masters in your house that you bow to? Yeah. That's very helpful, honestly, because even in the ashram, bowing to the masters and trying to keep, like I said, in your daily activities, doing these different things. Yes, master. Master, my thoughts seem to be going, please help me right now, master, please. I know you said the world's illusion. My mind seems to be really pressuring me into believing it's true. I have full faith and trust in you. Carry Maharaj with you all the, all the time. You know, when you're, when you're DJing and you're in between records, sit there and thank the master. Oh, that went very well. Thank you, master. I'm here right now. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with you. Okay, good, good. I'm driving. I see traffic. Master, this traffic is absolutely illusion. My mind is going to try to press on me that this is true, and I'm going to get all caught up in the thinking process. But I know I'm formless. So what is there to think about? I'm just going to remain with you, my master. Master, I'm at your feet always. At your feet doesn't mean just like physically, although this is good too. But at your feet in the heart, I am at your feet. I am listening to your teachings. You are feeding me the best fruit, and I am accepting only these dishes from you. I'm no longer going out and trying to search for the McDonald's Happy Meal, which may <laughs> seem very nice, but you're offering yeah. delicious fruit. <laughs> I could do better than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very helpful. It sounds like a silly thing. And I know there'll be a lot of Advaita Vedantist people who are saying, oh, but now you're getting into practice and you're doing and all this sort of stuff. Well, as long as you believe that you're having this body form that gets carried away with thoughts, use this body form to remain at the feet of the master, both through mind and in physical. You know, it, it's... You, there's there's Maharaj. Good morning, Master. I'm off to, you know, before I leave the house, I'll bow to each one of the Masters. And that's, you know, good morning, bow to the Masters. I leave the house. When I leave in the evening time, I bow to the Masters, each one. In the, in the evening when I go to sleep, I bow to the Masters, each one. And I lay my head on the pillow as I did and see... Yes, you could say, okay, well, John is there bowing to the masters. Yes, I'm using this body form because even when I bow at that pillow with my head there, I can mentalize Maharaja's feet. And yes, this is where I remain. Because that mind sees this somehow. It, you will stop giving yourself all these thoughts, all these illusory things because you're remaining at the feet of the master. Now it's master's job to handle your thoughts. It's master's job to handle your daily activities. And Maharaj has stated many times, you leave your ego mind intellect at his feet and he will do the rest. 
You take one step and the master will take the next step. This devotion is very, very important. Selfless self-devotion, non-stop selfless self-devotion. Because as Nizagadatta Maharaj says, the I am is pleased and re opens all the secret for you. As Sri Ramakant Maharaj says, you bow to the feet of selfless self, you be with you always. And, and it's just, it's an atmosphere that's so... It's, it's, it's an atmosphere that's, that's, that's created. It's, it's, it's constant attention on the selfless self, constant attention on presence, constantly involving yourself with yourself. Like sometimes I noticed a, like a sense of selfless self in the background. And then other times it, I guess, uh, it takes the foreground sometimes or it becomes so obvious. That's when I think I'm not going to lose it, but uh, it just seems so, so tangible or like not, not tangible, but uh, so present, you know, it is definitely tangible. You can feel the presence. I mean, you can feel the presence as if you, somebody dropped you into a jar of jelly suddenly you can feel the presence using this body form you can feel the presence. And why? Because there's no layers of illusion covering up the mind. It's a clear, clean mirror reflecting. Sometimes that's so obvious. Yeah. And it's only the illusory layers that are, it's, it's not like the presence is coming and going. It's here always, all the time, <laughs> everywhere, open and available for you to immediately put your attention there. Using this body form as an instrument to dip the cup the nectar of immortality that can be sipped on. There's another thing that comes to mind too is when when I when I do when it does become obvious a presence, it seems like I don't have to do anything anymore about it. It seems like I don't have to practice because it's just so obviously true. You know. Yes. But then, Until the illusory layers of thinking start to block it. Right. That's why if you become aware during that time that you're fully aware of the presence. As illusory layers start to come in, that's that train. And as it starts to build, no, mantra. Okay, erase the illusory layers. And while you're feeling the presence, it's perfectly acceptable. Yes, master. Yes, you are here. I am one with my selfless self. I am one with the master. That presence is all there is. And the only thing that even appears to be separating that presence is this body form, which I'm not. And in reality, the presence isn't separated because it's inside this body and outside this body, just like the air. Because if I breathe in the air in the room, I suddenly say it's my air. Well, it's not my air. The room air is the same. I breathe it out, it's back to the room. So I'm giving it back to the room. But in truth, air is everywhere. This is all these things. So when the presence is felt very strongly, Thank you, Master. Thank you. I, guess. I mean, you see videos of Sri Ramakant Maharaj <clears throat> when he was doing the bhajans and he'd walk in in the morning and it's so beautiful. He's putting his head right at the feet of Sri Nizagarata Maharaj, the, the cast or whatever, the, the feet that they have in the ashram, you see he's puts his, he puts his head because that's selfless self-devotion, that's selfless self-intoxication. That is, and it's spontaneous. It's just you want to. You want to please this presence that you are more than anything in the world, because the world is appearing on spontaneous presence. So why not please this I am, this sense of presence, this consciousness, which by the way, the consciousness is creating everything that you appear to be perceiving. And the more you remain with the consciousness and the more you remain at the master's feet, the more this kind of conscious experience turns to just beauty, flowers, 
uh, love, joy, happiness, dipping the nectar of immortality, the selfless self-intoxication. It's, uh, it seems like, yeah, it seems like it would be something that I would regret, uh, losing because it, it is so precious. But then when I get wrapped up in, uh, my my mind and my uh, limited sense of value. Well, remember again, it's not your mind. It's a flow of thoughts. And because you identify with a body named Keith, you believe that they're your thoughts. But it's just a flow of thoughts. They'll flow by whether Keith tries to identify with them or not. Now, the more you don't identify as Keith, these thoughts won't really impress. Like we said, look at the black and white TV and you're seeing the world in color. And the mind sits there and says, hey, I've got some information for you about what's going to happen tomorrow. And it's playing in black and white. And you see the world in color. So you say, no, 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 thank you, Mr. Mind, but I'm quite happy with just as it is. And see a full trip, faith, and trust, because what is the mind used for? You don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. And you want to know what's happening in the next moment. So Mr. Mind is over here on his typewriter typing what's going to happen in the next moment. And you then say, oh, now I feel comfortable that it's going to happen this way. And 50% of the time it may happen that way. 50% of the time it may not. But you feel comfortable. You know, like Maharaj says, you're buying fake notes. You believe the dream is true. So you want to use these dream notes. to, to And they're fake. They're fake notes. Everything that this mind flow is telling you that's going to happen is absolutely not going to happen. Because in truth, you're not the body. So, and again, if you step back just one thing, you are formless. You are not body. You were not body. You're not going to remain the body. All of the body-based knowledge, all of the body-based experiences, all of the body-based relations are untrue. They are the deer and the mirage. The deer does not know that it's a mirage until it puts its nose in the sand. And you do not know that all of these body-based things are untrue until you know yourself in a real sense. And all you have to do is know yourself in that moment and the spontaneous conviction comes, so that I, I am that. That is all there is. So all of this appearance... All the seen is absolutely illusion. The seer is the only reality. The power of the seeing. The consciousness which is creating all of this that has appeared to that one that did not know yourself. Knock, knock on the door. You had to be there in order for the experience of you being there to be registered. And now using body form, you can feel this presence. And the presence lets you know, oh yeah, the entire world appears on spontaneous presence and you're absolutely formless. So uh, what, what to be caught up in? I know you have a job. Okay, I have a job too, but I'm, and I do my job to the fullest of my ability. And I'll have my manager will say, okay, we're going to have this review, so I'd like you to type these things up, or I'd like you to do more of this or less of that or something. And you just do it because you're formlessness holding the body. And you don't have to tell your manager, you know, <laughs> we're both formless <laughs> presence. The presence in you that's giving me the review is the same presence that's in me working for that review. No. <laughs> no. It's reality. But even because it's reality, it doesn't have to be told. Because you're prior to speech, prior to thought, formless, timeless, spaceless, attributeless. All attributes came within the illusion because they appeared on spontaneous presence with the illusion of duality and the, the experience, the, 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 the concept you're experiencing. But you're not experiencing the illusion of duality appeared because you know yourself. As soon as you know yourself, then you know so many other things. But when you did not know yourself, there was nothing to know because there was nothing other than you. And there was nothing that you could know because A, you don't have the faculty of knowing. 
You know, there's no instrument to know, and there's nothing other than you to know. And now that you know something, you want to know everything. But all this knowing is just appearing on that knowingness, and that you are. You are all of this. Stop limiting yourself to one individual body form and thinking that Keith is like, or John, is like some high priority organism in all the organisms that are here. For some reason, John should have the priority. But come on now. You're the presence in all the beings. You're the presence. Spontaneous, invisible, anonymous, unidentified identity that you are. It's naturally humble, too. Yeah, because think about how egoistic it is to say, well, everybody, John, (laughs) this thought is very important for John, and John's life and job is so important that he has to be 100% into it. You know, I need to, if the presence is is animating 100% of the world, I need 99% of that presence for my own self. The 1% can be divided out among the world, but 99% has to be for me. (laughs) Mr. Jim, as a firm, you are an outlier. Do what? As a farm, you are an uh-huh. outlier. So. Well, you're formless. You never, you never took body form. <laughs> Just as when you lay down at night and sleep, the dream is a formless dream. You never took any of the body forms within that dream. You're formless. And yet you can appear within the dream and move around and do things and, and, and experience. But then you wake up and you know, oh, it's a dream. And the same with this, this body-based experience, the illusion of experience created by I am somebody else is not true. I, I had an interesting experience today. Uh, Upon awakening uh, from sleep, uh, for I, I usually I, f- I felt like I normally do, but then uh, this sense of um, feeling uh, good, just to be aware and alive, it was just like going back. It it, it took me back to when I was a child when I would wake up. And I would just see the beauty of the world. And it was just all good for no reason. It's just like this good feeling that I used to get more often when I was, a, I think it was there more, more when I was a child or something. But it, it was, it was there for like a flash. And, you know, it did help me get through the day better. It, uh, I just thought that was interesting. I, I wonder, and then I asked my mother if she ever has that uh, feeling of, of you know, good for no reason, just the beauty of the world, uh, like like when she was a child. And she said, yeah, she gets that occasionally, but it's, she said, like, it's fleeting too. But uh, I just thought that was well, Nizargadatta Maharaj talks about when you wake up in the morning, and Sri Ramakant Maharaj has talked about the just I feeling. Just I, just I. I without anything. You wake up in the morning, and before the gears in the mind start to you know, put you in the world as a body, it's just I, just the feeling of existence. And that's the feeling of presence before anything comes and starts layering on that you say, oh, this presence, and then this presence is this body and I'm Keith. This is like, you're just, you just wake up your presence, but you can do that right now. You can sit there and remain with that same sense as early in the morning. Oh, just presence, just die, just die. Something tries to go and topple on top of the eye mantra, remain with yourself with self. And the truth is the more you invite the attention of the invisible listener and the more that presence is felt, it drowns out everything else. It's like a, 
you know, like if you dive into a swimming pool and whoosh, and then like people might be talking up above, but, and you hear them. And then when you dive into the pool, it's not. And this is like, as you remain with presence, it, it's like you're drowning in presence. There's, there's nothing but presence. And this body form is just basically drowning in presence to the point where then, just like in the pool, you float and you stop to feel the body pressure so much because now you're floating. And as you remain with this sense of presence, this body kind of uh, feeling is loose. <laughs> it's not, again, it's like the tight shirt and now you have bought nice new clothes and they're fitting very nice and you can move. Whereas before, maybe they were two sizes too small. And now, now it's very light. Very light. I think sometimes the ego, you know, in that experience that you're describing, gets frightened it's of losing itself, so it pulls you back out. Um. And again, like dipping the toe into the pool, mm -hmm. and you say, hmm, okay, it's warm. <laughs> Okay, then dip a foot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then the rest. Okay, okay, good, good. And that's the full, tra fuss, mm -hmm. look, full trust and faith as well. Also remember, Sri Ramaka Maharaj said that Sri Nizagadatta Maharaj talks about the tenants, and the tenants will abuse you. And that's what you just said about the egoic sense of self that's feeling a loss, feeling like, oh, what is happening to me? And we'll start to project thoughts of fear or anything to get the attention. Since you're loosening up the clothes, it wants you to say, okay, even though the clothes are loose, you still have some clothes on. You know, maybe we focus on the temperature in the room so that you feel a little bit warm so that you recognize the fact that you still have these clothes on. This is just an example, of course, but mm -hmm. the whole concept is, you know, you're you're using this body form to basically take a back dive into the presence. If you walk into and you touch your toe and you touch your foot and you get it warm, then yes, you could back away. But you literally just close your eyes and fall backwards, boom, into the presence through mantra, through remaining with your selfless self. This presence is all there is. Maharaj has said, this presence is all there is. That formless presence in the body is animating all of this world. And so you remain there. Remain at the feet of the master. And when this egoistic sense of self starts to feel fear, then it's just more, okay, no, master says this is going to happen. That's why a lot of people, they start mantra, and their mind starts to play all these tricks because like the jig is up, so to speak, you are using mantra and the mind is saying, oh, ho, 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 no, no, no. What if this happens? What if that happens? No, no, no. Maharaj has said, you just continue and remain. You remain. Because the truth is, this sense of presence that's all this world is appearing on, this consciousness, whatever you want to talk about, it's interacting with your own selfless self. And your ideas and concepts and belief that you may be holding is how you're perceiving this illusory experience. But if you know yourself as formless, then the experience, it, it, it won't impress. There's nothing for it to land on. Two words that came to me this week were um, formless. You know, I was listening to something by Nisargadatta, and he said one of the things that we need to hammer, hammer ourselves with is the fact that we're formless. Yes. And another thing, another thing that came to me was the, uh, the word no association, no association with anything, because basically our uh, formless self is not associated with anything. Right. Nothing, no thought, no feeling, no concept, no experience, no, no nothing. <laughs> yes. And it's just basically trying to hang out there um, and just whenever something comes up to pull, you know, to pull me out of that, just recognizing it for what it is. And uh, so it's like trying just to be, like you were saying before, you know, like uh, 
Thank you, Mass. Uh, you know, like I think Keith mentioned something about which is sometimes he's just there. It's like trying to stay there. Um, so. Yeah, the illusion of experience is brought about only because I believe I'm a body. Without a body, I can't experience. Yeah. Your formlessness is not experiencing. It's not having any birth. It's not having any death. It's not having any life. Nothing, 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 nothing. So the illusion of experience is because I believe that I'm a body, and therefore I'm perceiving from the point of view of being a body in a world. But the world is in, in you. You are not in the world. Again, going back to dream, the dreamer, as Maharaj says, who's taking a video shooting of the whole dream and seeing the dream, is not in the dream. Nothing that's happening inside the dream is actually happening because you're, you're, you wake up and it's gone. Nothing, no, none of these people went to hell or heaven or where was God or which God was being worshipped or what. It's all nothing. And the illusion of experience brought about by I am a body is untrue because you are not body. And you can discover that you're not body while using this body within this, this formlessness that you are, inviting the attention of the invisible listener that I'm not this form. Invisible, anonymous, unidentified identity. I'm not has to do with this form. I am not. And that's the reality. Until that reality is recognized, it will be the deer that will continue to imagine that its thirst will be quenched with the sand that is actually not a lake, but it does not know that it's not a lake, and it will imagine its thirst to be quenched. It might even, if it's talking to other deer, say, oh, thank goodness we've arrived. We're going to go and have a nice drink now. <laughs> and up to the point where that nose is in the sand, it will imagine everything. But once the nose has gone in the sand, or once you know yourself in a real sense, spontaneous conviction, oh, so that I, I am that, then the sand is not going to quench your thirst. This is be known. And you can no longer imagine or delude yourself into believing be anything other than that. Everybody Is the internet working? <laughs> I just saw everybody freezing. <laughs> yeah, actually, the, your phone signal is trying to changing. Red, hello, like that. Uh, so, uh, okay. Mr. John, uh, yes. Actually, you know, the, your answers, you know, are uh, exported in, in a PDF form, like if Mr. Uh, Andrew or Keith. So whoever is saying like, you know, like maybe actually, you know, for me, those are helping immensely, the pure answers. Those are the, you know, questions, you know, we uh, I get in day to day life, many of the questions. So and reading those answers are really helping. So if they are interested, you would share the document I shared on your WhatsApp. Well, then know that Every question is just a doubt about your formlessness because you have to create a questioner. And from the position of this questioner, then how this questioner is perceiving the world is how the question will come about. So every question is just a doubt about your formlessness because if you understand truly your formlessness, then what question could there be? Only when you have this concept of being a form and you're forming a question. Every question is a doubt about your formlessness because you say, how can I not be this body? But that's a doubt about your formlessness. You're not this body. And that's why a lot of times, you know, when, when Maharaj, that's how Maharaj hears you. He, it's like, okay, I'm formless and I would like to ask about what it's going to be like when this body dies. Well, uh, I don't know. You're formless and you're not, there's no birth or death to you, but it's, you know, the person that you're believing yourself to be is asking the formlessness, what happens when I leave this body? 
Well, but you're, you're not really in this body. You're formless. You invite the attention of the invisible listener so that you can have the direct experience of your own formlessness. And then you want to ask a question about the form that you're not because you'll know you're formless. And then the concept of birth and death will dissolve instantly because this formlessness can't be born, cannot die. And so you'll know. But it has to be this direct experience, this direct experience of your own selfless self. Be with you always, inviting the attention of the invisible listener and remaining with a sense of presence. Just flip back in, boom. Thoughts are coming. No, no, no. I'm just here. I just, I'm remaining with my selfless self. And as the world comes in, okay, then do the dialogue with selfless self. Master, I so just want, I want the reality. I don't want this is what's happening outside. You know, just be with you always. Bhajan, you know, Maharaj has said, Bhajan, listening, <coughs> And see, now that you've read the books, you've listened, all of everyone has the spiritual knowledge and know, yes, I am that. I am Brahman. Absolutely, this is known. Now I need to have this direct experience. And I have this direct experience in my, quote, everyday life when I'm remaining with that direct experience and not going out into the illusory world. I continue to impress my formless nature upon myself and I'm refreshing my memories. When something pops up into the experience, no, I'm formless. I don't need to, to, to go there. I just don't. A thought comes in, it's in black and white. I have no interest in this thought. And, and yet, and another thought comes in, hey, I think we're hungry. Okay, let's go eat. And everything simple, simple, easy, easy. The clothes are loose. And everything is just, okay, scenes are coming, scenes are going, this is happening, that's not happening, because nothing's happening, but this appears to be happening. Okay. John, the uh, intoxication of the selfless self is so wonderful that I feel like I like it into eternity. Yeah, you just remain with your selfless self. Just remain. That, that beautiful presence that nothing is as important as the presence. Remain with a sense of presence. And you just, but it seems like we should go, should go on after this body dissolves. There'll be no because knowing of so this. it's so real. The presence real. is true, but the presence is felt because of using a body form. Now, as the last breath is taken that'll be the last thing that you're able to experience because the instrument will be available to experience the presence that you are and then you won't, but you'll know you are. Okay. Okay. You'll know that you are. Hmm? Exactly. The sense of presence will no longer be felt, but you'll, you, you the presence that you are, as this concept of leaving the body or as this concept, this body is no longer to sustain the moisture and yeah. that will be sensed the leaving of the, uh -huh. the, the experience of leaving the presence, so to speak, the last feeling, the last, whatever you want yeah. to call it, the it's, it's like a piece of ice in a glass of warm water. And you just, you just, just, so nicely, just okay. Presence, hmm. and that's because you want to have these illusory thoughts of I'm dying, and oh, what do I leave behind? And I hope my will was good. And you know, what about my little greedy relatives that are going to try to pick through all my stuff and all this? <laughs> no, you want you want to have any of this because you'll just be, oh yes, peace, and that's that. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like the whole way, you know, when it talks about in the Bible, Jesus showed everyone how to die. And Father, in my hands, I, I, I commend my spirit. Commend I give my, my spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's finished. And that's it. Yeah. I'm not thinking about, and, and what did he do? He said, uh, Mother, this is now your son. And you, so all these things that could have been something 
that would be a reason to try to hold on like, oh, what's going to happen to mom? No, mother, this is now your son. These two are taken care of. And I commend myself to your spirit. It's finished. It's finished. That's it. And, and even the whole, uh, on the crucifixion, that when they were talking, you'll be in my father's kingdom. My father's kingdom has many rooms. That's, that's mm -hmm. this. All of everything. But it's not like, you know, I leave this body and then like you see on some TV shows where now I'm like, I'm, I'm still this body, but I'm like kind of see-through and I'm sitting at a table with all these see-through bodies and such. No, because you're not a body now. <laughs> so it would be like waking up from the dream and some of the dream characters kind of hanging around a little bit because they didn't want to leave the dream. No, the dream's over. <laughs> Finish. That's that. <laughs> Because the dreamer mm -hmm. was, the dream never was. Mm -hmm. Just like when you wake up in the morning from a dream, it goes away. And this is also a living dream that simply comes to an end, period. Exactly. And people, I think, want something, they want to hang on to something that's afterwards, you know, maybe... Um, well, because you, they believe themselves to be bodies and that they're actually living a life, yeah. but it's not true. Yeah. If you believe yourself to be a body and you're having the illusion of having experiences, then you might want those experiences to continue. In truth, and this is Maharaj talks about the ants, for the first time, the presence knows itself as being alive in the form of an ant, so when you pour water, the ants run. They want to protect the presence in those bodies, want to protect the body because that's the first time it ever knew itself. But you are everything. You never were these limited somethings. Then all of this is the creation and destruction of the five elements, which is all occurring within the dream. And you're the dreamer that's providing all the power. And when this body falls, who dies? But see, if I identify with a body, then I identify that this is me, this is my life, and I really want to, you know, this is, I, what happens after I die? Well, but this is only when I identify with a body form that can die. And the body's not even really dying, it's just kind of defaulting back to its natural state. You know, the air takes the air, the, the earth takes the earth, the fire takes the fire, all of that. And that's why in the beginning of like Das Bode or anything, it will say like the fire creates this and then creates that and then the elements and then the elements create and then boom, here we are. And the dissolution of the universe goes back in the reverse order. But all of that is occurring within the dream. And yeah, your dream characters tonight when you're dreaming, they don't stand at the edge of the dream and protest. We should keep on. Or they meet you the next night when you lay down and sleep. They're all in a row. Oh, hey, we want to be in the dream tonight, too. We want to continue. There's no continuation because it's eternal. It's outside of time. There never was all this that we're enjoying in this moment. So enjoy this in this moment. Enjoy you go to a movie, and when the movie's over, the, the lights come on, and you leave the theater. And you'll leave the theater with a sense of presence, being able to sense the presence as you are experiencing your selfless self through this body until you are no longer experiencing. The I am appears, the I am disappears. But the one to whom the I am appears and disappears is always there. Otherwise, there couldn't have been an appearance. When Moses asked God who he was, he, he said, uh, in, the old, in Exodus, I think, I am who I am. I am that I am. I am yes. Am, yeah. Because that's all, all that is true, actually, is I am that I am. I'm everything who suddenly knew I was a existing and in the existence projected a dream world that I appear to be in so that I can have the illusion of experience by being a body form, but none of it's true. Because even the sense of existence 
is the concept of duality. You exist, you don't need to know you exist. The sense of existence has appeared to that which was existing, but didn't know it was existing. And again, that's the basis of, you can say, you are prior to every experience. You have to be there in order for an experience to register. Well, this experience, I exist, spontaneously created this world, and you're a character in this world because the first time you know that you exist, I exist as this. And there's mom and dad to tell you, yeah, you exist as John. You're our son. But formless presence in mom and dad and formless presence in John is just attached to a body for a time. Like Maharaj says, the spirit clicks with the body and you say I. But it's not true. Oh, wow, it's 823. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, good night. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.